Hi everyone, and thanks for stopping by. Over the past few months, I've had a few people asking, how did I make my tool setting jig here? Uh, those of you who watched my videos will have seen it being used for setting the tool height, and I um, use it quite a bit for uh, V cutter setting because setting those things is quite difficult. A, lo a lot of tools now I set by eye, but when it comes to V cutters or setting two tools, one to follow after the other, I use this little box here. I've set this little button to be 50 millimeters above the table, so once the cutter touches that, I know how high it is at any given point. It's a very simple circuit, it's simply an LED, a battery, a 470 ohm resistor, a crocodile clip and a piece of wire. The crocodile clip simply connects to the button here and completes the circuit. The good thing about this particular unit though is this button in that if the cutter when it's coming down goes too far the button can depress in about um, maybe about eight millimeters or more so there's plenty of time to to stop it if uh, things go astray so I'm not going to show you how the electrics are done inside here but what I am going to show you is how I made this movable button these components here form the heart of that movable button that uh, sits on top of my unit the first and most important part is this now this started life as this a standard 8 millimeter bolt I'll just give a quick measurement of it and it works out at 35 millimeters long I can it must have been a 40 mil bolt when I started it's it's been cut so What I did is I put this here into a lathe and unfortunately there's no other way of doing it except by using a lathe. I basically took the corners off the nut there and faced across the top here and that produces this. The next part I made again on a lathe is this here. It's a piece of acetal and it measures 16 millimeters in uh, length here and what I did is I put this in a lathe and I ran an 8 millimeter drill through it and then I followed that through with a half inch drill but I didn't go all the way through I went almost all the way through so there's only about a millimeter of uh, material left on the inside here but that's enough I then uh, also got a spring. This spring here is sized such that it will go over the the modified bolt, but can't go past it. It's, it traps on the head there. Another piece of equipment that I've modified is this nut here, and as you can see here, there's a small hole in it which I've actually tapped, and I've got a small grub screw here which goes into the nut. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just set that there so it's almost touching but isn't. You'll see what that's for shortly. We also have another standard 8mm nut which hasn't been modified and an 8mm washer to go with it. The last piece is this here it's the box. I've used a die cast aluminium box and I drilled an 8mm hole in it. The hole has to be such that there is ease of movement for this bolt to go in and out. I should also mention that the head of this here is sized such that it can move easily in and out of this piece of acetal here without binding but not too sloppy. So let's assemble this unit. First the spring goes onto our bolt and then is pushed into the acetal here like so. It then goes into the hole in our die cast aluminium box and I'm just moving uh, the battery holder out of here. Next goes on the washer 
and then our nut with the allen key uh, grub screw on it and I'm just going to wind that down now this nut is what we're going to use to set our height with so I've wound it in there a little bit to where I think will be correct and I'm just going to put the bottom on it like so now this is the hardest part of the operation trying to set the correct height for this I want 50 millimeters so the only real way I got of doing it is with the calipers and I'm just going like so and I'm getting for just a fraction over 49 millimeters so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the bottom off here and I'm just going to unwind the nut a little bit like so put the lid back on hold it together and take another measurement that's 49.6 so I'll go a little bit more. The 8mm nut has uh, quite a fine thread on it. It's about one and a quarter millimeters per revolution. So I can get reasonably fine adjustment. So that's measuring 49.8. So we'll come a little bit more. And that's just a fraction too much, that's 50.1. So I'll just wind it back a little bit the other way. Forty-nine point nine nine. So that's close enough, that's close enough for me anyway. Next, I need to tighten up the grub screw in here. So I'm basically just going to hold it exactly where it is get my allen key in there and tighten it up this is actually the quite difficult to do because there's not a lot of room to swing the allen key now should you find that you've got the nut or the allen key ends up in a position where you cannot do any anything with it then just carefully hold the nut and the bolt just pull it towards you and turn the lock together until you've got it into a position where you can get the allen key in and just nip up that grub screw so I've done that the last part is this nut here that goes on afterwards and is used to connect the wire that you're going to complete your circuit with now your circuit could be uh, an LED like mine is it could also simply be a buzzer there's no reason why it couldn't be an audio signal. It couldn't. No reason why it couldn't be both audio and uh, a light. And there's also the other possibility that it may not have anything in it other than a wire coming from this point here, which then goes away to Mac 3 for auto tool setting. And the box here simply provides a button that the auto tool setter can hit and go down a little bit further uh, should it need to should uh, things go wrong in Mac 3 basically just a, a, a slight bit of safety to it in my case I'm going to connect up a little battery holder I have here which is going to hold a little 12 volt battery so I'll just wrap that around put my wire in between the two nuts there and tighten that nut up and that will hold that wire in place Ultimately, I'm going to glue my little battery holder to the base here so it's kept right out of the way. But for demonstration purposes, I'll just put my battery in there, put it there, and put it back together. I'll recheck it. And that's saying 50.01 now. So that's still good and as you can see there it's working fine so that's the heart of this unit basically a bolt, a piece of plastic, a spring, a couple of nuts and a grub screw well I hope uh, some of you will perhaps make one and um, I hope you enjoy it okay guys well thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time cheers